Hello! In this session we're going to look at specific latent heat. Now please make sure your phones are off, all other tabs on your computer are closed so as not to distract you, you've got the TV on in the background, you're not playing any games and you have a pen and paper to take notes and help you answer the questions. If you're ready we shall begin. I'm going to start off by drawing the particle arrangement of a solid. And we'll pretend that this solid is ice. We've got there, one kilogram of a solid. Now I'm going to add some thermal energy to it. I'm adding thermal energy to it either through a Bunsen burner or holding it in my hands. And we're going to think about what happens. Now we know what happens when ice uh, as the temperature increased. It will melt and it will become water. Now this process here is melting. It goes for any solid. And we've made one kilogram of a solid into one kilogram of a liquid by melting it. Now the interesting thing is if we were to look at the temperature when this process is happening, we start with our ice and we start it at zero degrees um, C. Um, I've picked zero degrees C and you'll see why in a second. So it's at zero degrees and I melt it and I take the temperature of my now liquid water and it's still at zero degrees C. Now this process is called the specific latent heat of fusion. So specific late of latent heat of fusion. And that is the energy required to turn one kilogram of a solid into one kilogram of a liquid without a change in temperature. So one kilogram of a solid into one kilogram of a liquid without a change in temperature. It also happens to be the same energy required if we're turning a liquid into a solid. So it works in reverse as well. Um, so we can have the process going backwards. Uh, which is freezing. So the specific latent heat of fusion is the energy required to change one kilogram of a solid into one kilogram of a liquid without changing the temperature. It's that key part without changing the temperature. The same thing will happen in reverse, obviously turning from a, a liquid to a solid. Well, let's imagine we have a liquid still and we continue to heat it and we rise the temperature up to 100 degrees, so we're up to the boiling point. We will then turn it into a gas. We have one kilogram of a gas. Uh, so this process, as we know, is boiling, or evaporation it could be as well. Going back the other way is obviously, as we call it, down condensing. Now we're still focusing on water here, just for an example. Water, the boiling point of water is what? That's right, it is 100 degrees. So as we change the liquid into a gas, and we're boiling it, we take the temperature, we will get a gas at 100 degrees as well. And that is the specific latent heat of vaporization. So we've got two specific latent heats here, one of fusion, which is either melting or freezing, and one of vaporization, which is boiling or condensing. Now, the specific latent heat of vaporization, very similar to fusion, it is the energy required to change one kilogram of a liquid into one kilogram of a gas without changing the temperature. Um, it's also, turning one kilogram of a gas into one kilogram of a liquid without changing a temperature. But it all depends on whether energy will be going in or out as to what will happen uh, to the, the state of matter. So we're going to have a look at some uh, what's happening to the energy and the bonds between them. Uh, so we're going to go down. So we've got one kilogram of a gas. And I'm going to turn it into one kilogram of a liquid. Now this process 
as we know it is called condensation. We think about what is happening to the energy. The energy is being given out into the environment at this stage. It is an exothermic reaction as it's cooling down and she's going to go from the gas out into the environment. That reduction in the thermal energy of the particles allows intermolecular bonds to form. The intermolecular bonds can now form as the gas becomes a liquid. Now, as the liquid cools down even more, we're going to become a solid. Apologies, my particles aren't all touching at this point. They definitely should be. We've now got the freezing process. So we are freezing. Again, energy will be given out. Energy is given out into the environment, allowing the intermolecular bonds to form between the particles, forming a, thus forming a solid. We're now going to have a look at how we calculate specific latent heat. And we can use the energy required to change the state, remember changing state, not changing the temperature, by using the following equation, E equals M times L. So E is my energy required to change state. And it is measured in joules. M is my mass of the substance. My mass of the substance is measured in kilograms. And L is my specific latent heat. And my specific latent heat is measured in joules per kilogram. And this is the equation we will need. We're now going to have a go at doing one. So my question here, <clears throat> what is the energy required to change three kilograms of water into three kilograms of water vapor? I'm turning from a liquid into a gas. The specific latent heat of vaporization of water is 2,226,000 joules per kilogram. And with any equation, I'm going to write down what I know. I'll write down my formula first. So E equals M times L. Energy is my mass. E is my energy. M is my mass. And L is my specific latent heat. I already know I've got three kilograms of water into water vapor, so I know my mass. I know my specific latent heat of water is 2,226,000 joules per kilogram. I can now work this out. So I do E equals my mass, which is 3, times by my specific latent heat, 2,226,000 thousand joules per kilogram. Let's just add in my kilograms here. And my energy, I don't expect any of you to be able to do this in your head if you can. You are an absolute genius. We get six million six hundred and seventy eight thousand joules. That is how much energy is required to change three kilograms of water into three kilograms of water vapor. Now, thank you very much for watching. Um, I hope this has been useful in explaining specific latent heat. Do have a go now at the questions. Um, any problems, contact either myself or your teachers and we can give you some more help. Have a great day. Take care. Bye bye.